Have you ever wanted to know how to cultivate the presence of the Lord? How about what is the glory of God and how can you be a glory carrier? If you'd like to have these questions answered, then stay tuned today because my guest is going to share with us all about being a glory carrier. Welcome to the Glory Road Television Show. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smitheman, and today we are going to be talking about being a glory carrier. My guest today, Jennifer Evaz, has written a book called Glory Carriers, How to Host His Presence Every Day. She's an international minister. She writes for Charisma. She's authored many books, conference speaker, and she's also an executive pastor at Harvest Christian Center in Turlock, California. And so God has just deposited so much on the inside of her, and I am really excited about welcoming her on the show today so she can share with us how to be a glory carrier. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. This is amazing. I'm so excited. It's going to be wonderful. This is a topic near and dear to my heart, and so I am really, really excited to see what God is getting ready to do with this conversation and how people are really going to be able to step into that place of learning how to be a glory carrier themselves. Amen. So tell me, obviously, you know a lot on this subject, so what prompted you to write this book? Well, it really is a journey. It's a compilation of just the journey that I took, um, just just seeking to be a person that carries the glory of God continuously. Now, when I say the glory of God, I'm talking about the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit, something that you can see, something that's tangible. But but it boiled down to this. This is really where it started. It started out of two two frustrations that I, that I had, and one was this, that uh, I could not feel the presence of God continuously on a daily basis. You know, I had to go to like a special conference or, you know, sometimes with my prayer times I could, I could connect with this presence, but it just wasn't continuous, and I was frustrated with that. And then the second thing was when I would minister to people, and I read the Bible, I know it's possible to, for people to be delivered and healed, and when I lay hands on them, that's what should happen. Well, it didn't happen all the time. And I got frustrated. And I'm like, the Bible says it should happen. I know I know of people that it, that seems like it happens. And it wasn't happening with me. And so I began to really seek the Lord on that. And I, I took note of men and women of reputation who walked in the glory of God continuously, meaning signs and wonders. And they all said the same thing. They said um, that the Holy Spirit is my friend. And so I took that as my cue that I need to find a friendship with the Holy Spirit, and something in that was going to awaken this whole new world to me, and it sure did. Now, what exactly is the glory of God? Can you, can you share a definition with us? Well, the simplest definition is the manifest presence of God, um, uh, meaning uh, you see it, it's tangible, it's visible. That's the glory of God. And, and, you know, we should be carriers of the manifest presence of God. I mean, you know, we... We should carry uh, a visible de demonstration. That's who we are. We are actually supernatural people. Um, you know, we're not natural people. And there should be a clear-cut manifestation. But that all comes back to your friendship with the Spirit of God, your, your cultivation of relationship with the Spirit of God. And when you do that, His super gets on your natural, and you start to really flow in signs and wonders naturally. You don't have to work it. It's there. And Amen. so, you know, that's how I would define it. Now, what are some manifestations that we might see uh, through us or around us when people are operating in the glory of God or are actually being glory carriers? Well, let's, you know, the ones that we see in the Bible, of course, you know, if you're a believer in Jesus, you're going to heal the sick. You're going to um, cast out demons, raise the dead. Um, those are the things that we see clearly in the Word. And then there's, uh, you know, you can go past that. 
you start seeing um, uh, miracles, you know, and signs and wonders. I, I'm, I'm in a season now where I'm exploring unusual signs and wonders, beneficial ones, not not kooky, spooky stuff. You know, I like things to be pragmatic and practical. But I found that we put we put limits on God and what He will do um, when He's not limiting Himself. <laughs> We're the one who's limiting Him. And you know, I found that the Lord will will uh, not just heal your body, but He'll actually heal your finances. He'll reset your finances. Um, that was an unusual one for me. Um, where I learned that is I heard the word of the Lord in one meeting that I was uh, ministering at, and he said, uh, tell them that I'm going to put money into their bank accounts. And I thought, okay. And then he says, tell them to raise their phone. Check, check their account first. Check it. He said, tell them to raise their phone before me and shake it. And so it's so nuts. It was crazy. I mean, that's just so nutty. And and everybody's shaking their phones, right? It's they believe They're believers. And about $12,000 dropped in the room, total, $12,000. And he put money into their bank accounts, supernaturally, just dropped. They, they checked their accounts. And the, what was most powerful to me, let me tell you what was most powerful to me about that miracle, is when we got the testimonies, these two widows, and they uh, one was uh, uh, young, another um, probably in her 50s, but these two widows walked up and shared a testimony one girl, she got $900 increase in her bank account, and she didn't know how she was going to pay to get herself home. The second one, uh, she got about $2,200, $2,300, something like that. And it was just that the Lord took care of these widows like that. He just put money in their account, just, just like that. And then other people as well. But that's what I'm talking about, manifest presence of God, miracles like that. And, and I had to work through it because I'm just like, I'm like, how does God pick and choose who gets money and who doesn't? And I realize that he'll heal your body, but he'll also heal your finances. He'll reset your finances. Obviously, if you don't take care of stuff, you'll get back into that same place. But but he'll still do it. He'll reset your finances. He'll heal your money. Mm, amen. Well, I know that's a word for people that are watching right now because, you know, finances are something that, you know, many people... Um, you cry out to the Lord about, you know, it's, I'm sure on the throne of God, he hears every single, you know, millisecond, somebody right. needing something, uh, some level of provision. And so just to know that he loves us and he cares so much about us. And then even in the glory of God, finances can be released and deposited. I mean, that that's, that's truly powerful, right? Right there. You know, we talk about when we walk in miracle signs and wonders, we're being as Jesus was on the earth. We're healing the sick. You know, the blind are seeing, the uh, the deaf are hearing, the lame are walking. But we don't often think about that from a financial perspective. And so I really appreciate that. That, that I'm sure was a huge miracle. That, that I you, you know I never thought about it, and I kept thinking. I kept wanting to qualify like are these tithers or these you know. And I just I just put that away because I just kind of brought it back to he's, he'll heal your body. He'll, he'll heal your spirit, you know, deliverance. There's no qualifier for these, and he'll heal your finances. And it's strange that I'm even bringing this emphasis on this show because I've never brought this emphasis this much mm. on any time I've talked about this book, but I've watched it happen, and it's such an encouragement. You want to start a business and you, you can't get any capital? Let's go to the Lord and have him multiply because he multiplies things. And, and you know, there's provision in glory. In the realm of glory, he provides according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And so in that realm, there's this multiplication of finances. He'll reset you. He'll get you started. He'll get you back on track again. Yeah. Obviously, we need to obey the word in finances and use, you know, use wisdom and all of that. But still, it doesn't mean he won't reset you. And I, I watched him do it. I watched him do it. So it's, it's amazing. Well, you know what? I'm really feeling God speaking to me about the fact that yeah. you're going to need to pray for supernatural finances and for that miracle drop to come in. I saw yesterday the vats of heaven opening. I saw so much gold and silver coming forth and jewels coming from the vats of heaven. And so when I think about the fact that you were chosen to be the guest on the show today, and that's really what I saw yesterday in the spirit realm that God was opening up doors of destiny for people and that with that he was supplying all of their need they just had to have the faith to step through those doors that God had there and I think a lot of times what stops people from doing that is the financial burdens 
um, that they currently have or that might be on the other side of that door of destiny. And so I really feel in the spirit realm that we should be praying about supernatural, that supernatural download coming from the bats of heaven so that people can walk through those doors of destiny today. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, so we will pray at the end for that for sure because I know that, okay. that people are are on that. Uh, yeah, something <laughs> on that. The Lord's going to do something with with the provision. I could feel it. So me too. Me too. I definitely can. I don't know. Maybe we should just do it now, Jennifer. Why well, just do it now? Let's do it. We can do it now and later. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it now. I'm going to let you just go for it, and we'll let let the power of God just drop um, the finances into our checkbooks. Hallelujah. Pray for us. Well. Let's hit it from a couple angles. We're going to pray for the for the supernatural drop. There's definitely some people that you need that. Like like you there's you have no way to to move forward or move out of something unless the Lord just does provision. And so I just you know again go ahead just double check your account, um, you know your account right now and and don't qualify. This is one of those miracles that you just don't qualify it. Um, you know, should I have done this? Should I have done that? No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. Just, just we're going to start fresh here. And and the reason I bring out the phone because so many people uh, uh, have their accounts on the phone. Maybe some of you, you know, do it a different way, but I know do that. And so you want to check your account right now. Just, just eyeball it. Um, you know, and make sure that you can you can see where it's at. And so we're going to pray for the drop. And then I'm going to also pray um, uh, for the the witty inventions. And, and those kind of things, the business uh, inventions, those things to be released to you as well. Because some of you, you need more than a drop. You need to, you actually need to uh, get into the power of wealth uh, to make wealth and create wealth for kingdom purposes. So, um, Holy Spirit, we just invite you right now. And wherever you're at right now, I want you to just begin to lift your praise. And I want you to lift your worship right now. And there's, there's really like a, a tangible realm that you enter through the doorway of praise and worship. And so, Jesus, we just acknowledge that you. You are the King of Kings, and you are the Lord of Lords. You're my King. You're my Lord. You're our King, our Lord. And we just lift up our praise and our worship to you, our adoration, knowing that you are our provider. Everything comes from you. You are our source. You are our supply. And and without you, we don't have a thing. And so we know that that it's coming from you, and, and we are prepared to give you glory for this miracle. And so in the name of Jesus, I just release that multiplication, that drop of finances into your bank accounts, into your uh, retirement accounts, into your uh, savings accounts, your checking accounts, even the wipeouts of debts. Yes. I just speak that. Uh, wipe out of mortgages and debts and car debts and loans and yes. and leases and things that you are having to pay on. Uh, it, uh, I just want to speak into it. It doesn't matter if you deserve it or not. It, right, this is not one of those kind of prayers. There's, there's no no condemnation, no shame. We just we just command an eraser of uh, the eraser of debts and the multiplication of finances and the drop of finances into your world. I also speak and release witty inventions, things that will um, cause you to have wealth, cause you to engage wealth, cause you to do, and the wisdom to engage it. Uh, thoroughly and all the way through we release your angels God in the name of Jesus uh, your angels to go on assignment for such purposes we release it in Jesus name Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name now we need to hear your testimony send it to Candace we've Amen. got to hear your testimonies because when it happens we need to hear from you I, I do have somebody that just testified that they had a hundred dollars Emily Rose Lewis she has her own ministry Emily Rose Lewis Ministries and she had a hundred dollars that was dropped at the countdown of this broadcast Wow um, and so um, she uh, so she wanted to share that with us so okay. praise the, praise the Lord okay. hallelujah this is this is awesome. <laughs> you know last night I saw in this or yesterday um, I saw in the spirit realm, that there were angels that were stomping in heaven and they were stomping, um, you know, like just uh, in, in harmony together, like a military stomp to keep the doors of destiny open for the people um, right. so that they would be able to walk through. And at the end of your prayer, you talked about may this uh, blessing, financial blessing, be for God's assignment on the lives of people. And I think that that's really, really important because right now here, 
um, you know, we're recording this on August 8th, which is the, um, the, the eighth day is the day of new beginnings in the month of new beginnings in 2019. And yesterday was the perfect day in the month of new beginnings. And that's when I had this vision and I really saw these vats opening and provision coming. And so for you to be my guest today and have that be one of the major miracles <laughs> that you saw, and you know, we only set this meeting up like a week ago. So. <laughs> Definitely the emphasis today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm all ready to receive because I have a lot of assignment on my life. And so that would be fantastic. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, good. Well, let's see if there's any other comments coming through here. Um, you know, um, I mean, listen, people are receiving it in faith. Hallelujah. So, you know, as you're receiving in faith, uh, I want you to let me know. Go to CandaceSmithman.com and, uh, and email me there and let me know. Or go to JenniferEvaz.com. Let Jennifer know. Um, this is a special time in the spirit realm. I'm excited. People are getting ready for Doors of Destiny. And they're going to have the financial blessing to walk through that. So this is, woo, this is awesome. It's the thing that you're speaking into because I started ministering that very theme a few months back uh, I started in Australia uh, again just talking about the realm of glory and what what happens in this realm you know we want to be glory carriers and a lot of times we just don't know the possibilities none of us do I'm just waking up to new stuff and I started talking to them about destinies um, uh, that are captive being set free exactly what what you're talking about as well so I just love that we're just in in just both hearing the Lord so so clearly and in such unity and it's been a theme that I've had since um, since that time uh, but one of the things that I, I saw when when that whole thought dropped uh, into me about captive destinies being set free okay so you've got to have the provision the finances you need the glory of God uh, to come upon your life uh, you know, for, for all those things that happen, uh, you know, and he started, I saw an angel, an angel that was sent to restore time, time that had been lost. Some of you, you just feel like you're too old. You, you got you don't have time to catch up. It's too late. All of that. And he was released an angel of a time to restore it. And that's biblical. You know, he restores what the locust ate. He restores, um, you know, things that are lost. I mean, that's totally biblical. It's totally sound. But we don't, we don't always recognize that God can do weird things with time because he lives outside of time. And we're just living out in chronological time everything that he's finished, right? And so, so he can restore what you feel is lost time or really is lost time and catch you up, catch you up financially. Some of you don't, you're, you're not even thinking as an older person you can live out the wealth that God intended you to live out. That's not true. Or you don't think you have the energy load. And he says if you wait on him, you'll run and you won't be weary. You'll walk, you won't faint. I mean, energy is available for you to do your kingdom assignment. So you're dead. Destiny at any age can be restored. You can get the finances for it. You get the energy to live it out and and be the most be the most um, uh, you know thriving, vibrant older person. You got the restart and the reset at sixty five and just start going for it. Amen. Wow, I know that ministers to a lot of people on the line right now who think that their dreams are dead because of their age or even because of, of how they, they feel physically on a daily basis. And so, right. you know, I really think that that falls really awesome in line with just how um, God has uh, dropped this whole message about being a glory carrier. Because if you carry yeah. the glory of God, then you have the energy you, because you're carrying the resurrected power of Jesus on the inside of you. And when, and that glory is going to be enough to sustain you because the glory of the Lord is tapping into heaven. You're tapping into heaven. And in heaven, there is no death. There's no death of the physical body. There is only life. There's only right. life. So the spirit and the soul are living and there's complete life all around us. And we should be able to have that today in the here and now. And you really show us that in the book, Being a Glory Carrier. Now, let me tell people. Right. How and it's. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead, Jennifer. That's okay. I, I interrupted you. Let me show people how to get your book. And then we want to come back. I want to hear um, what it is that. Uh, that you want to share with us. So this is how to get Jennifer's book, Glory Carriers, how to host his presence every day. Go to jenniferevaz.com or any major 
bookseller will have her book, Glory Carriers, uh, as well. And so um, this is going to be an awesome resource. So this will take this conversation to the next level for you. And I also want to let you all know about Dream Mentors, which is my uh, biblical life coaching and transformational life coaching school. If you want to learn more about the spirit, soul, and body as well, just like Jennifer's teaching in Glory Carriers, we teach it in our curriculum, and then we also credential you to go and teach and train others and help them learn to be coaches, or you just go out and coach yourself um, with the tools uh, and the understanding of spirit, soul, and body. So I just want to invite you to um, be a part of that if you'd like. So Jennifer, please continue to share with us again what your thoughts are. Okay, so you know the whole thing about um, uh, rejuvenation. But really, what we're after, and I believe what the Lord is after, is that you know we live out His purposes, we live out our destiny in in fullness. Because you know we are aware that He wrote out a book and a plan for your life individually before you ever got here. Psalm one thirty nine sixteen. Now we still have a free will. You know that doesn't mean we don't have a free will. And uh, but at the same time, He had a plan. And, and his, his uh, gifts and callings are irrevocable. And when that, that means that even if you, you start late, that he has a catch-up clause. <laughs> you know? and, and what he believes for you is extraordinary. I've seen those books in heaven. I've seen them. And the words that he writes about you, they're alive. They're living words. And so, so when people begin to prophesy your destiny and you're, you know, I'm not sure why I'm hitting all on this age thing, but you're 65, 75. They start prophesying your destiny, something you feel you should have done when you were 25. No, his gifts and callings are irrevocable. You can pick it right up. And there, there is, uh, there is a, a felt glory and a manifest presence that comes upon you. You know, he, what he appoints you to do, he anoints you to do, but you got to step into it. So there'll be energy for you. There'll be provision for you. I dare you as 75 to start coming alive to your, your destiny. I dare you. It happens. Be that sign and wonder, you know, and, and, and see that because, because the Holy Spirit wants to meet you in this and, and accomplish what they, what was established in eternity for your life because it has eternal implications. You know, um, I, I know people are being empowered by this video for sure in so many different ways. And it's interesting because, you know, that word that God had given me about doors of destiny were opening right now. Well, what you're talking about with the finances and, and the rejuvenation is this program is motivating people to step into their destiny. It's saying you do have a destiny. You do have assignment. It was written in the scrolls. And, and this week, right now, is time for you to reevaluate that to have no fear. The angels are stomping to keep those doors open for you. And you need to right. get through those doors and God will make the provision for you. And in that provision is going to be the physical uh, necessities that you have to have in order to make that journey. And so I really believe that this program is increasing people's faith right now to step into that place of, um, of believing that the glory of the Lord and the resurrected power of Jesus that lives on the inside of our temples is enough to help us get to the place that God has called us. And where the enemies tried to lie to us about our finances or lie to us about our health or lie to us about our age, we are binding those spirit of lies right now in the name of Jesus. And we are positioning people to take that leap of faith and step through those doors that are available to them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just really sense somebody just all of a sudden faith dropped in your heart. Go ahead and reach up, reach out for that provision. You just felt it. Reach, reach up and take it, take it. Let it just, just settle into you. Uh, we don't have to rationalize this or make it logical. Just take it. It's yours. I feel like the faith windows are faith is opening the windows right now. So just go ahead and take that. You're right. There is a huge faith increase right now. And, you know, and people are saying it as they're commenting. They're saying about how they're believing and receiving these miracles. You know what I love so much is not only is this the right time and day, but your book being about carrying the glory of God and actually um, manifesting his presence. It's happening right here and right now. This is thrilling. This is really thrilling. I can't wait to get um, get the comments. I'm giddy with the joy of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's awesome. I am. Um, you know, the, this book was really. It, it began in again in my utter frustration 
you know, of just not being able to connect with the Holy Spirit and just feeling like a total loser as a minister, and, you know, and, and just doing like, like actually going to the Holy Spirit and saying, will you please teach me how to be your friend? I, I just, I just want to be friends with you. And it was, it was so heartfelt, you know, it was so genuine because I, I love relationship with God. I love that more than the power and the, the miracles and everything that we're, we're pushing into right now. Before any of that, I'm like all about relationship with Jesus, relationship with the Spirit of God. And, and so I went after this relationship with the Holy Spirit, and it just kind of seemed like nothing was happening for a little bit. But then I remember the day, I, I, the day that I'm like, will you please teach me how to be your friend? I keep thinking we should be able to be connected, like, all the time. And I'm not talking about him residing on the inside of me. I know that. I know that theologically. I know I'm born again. I know he's, you know, I've been made new. I've been made a temple of the Holy Spirit. I know all that. I just couldn't feel his presence, you know. And I said, Holy Spirit. We've got to, well, this has got to get better. We need to have a friendship. And I felt him walk into the room. Mm -hmm. I felt him rest upon me. That's 11, uh, Isaiah 11. One. Um, and I felt him rest upon me. And and then that was something like I kept I kept going after that. And that, that same thing kept happening. Holy Spirit, teach me friendship. Teach me how to connect to you. Teach me how to walk in your presence. And he would come and he would rest upon me. And, and you know what happens to you? You get addicted to that that sense of his presence resting upon you. you get addicted to it that's when you start to transform that's when i feel real holiness starts coming into your world because when you grieve him and he lifts off of you you're like i can't i can't do that i i can't live that way anymore and for me you know what would grieve him was usually like attitudes in my own heart like bitterness criticalness judgments you know those kind of things he, he just doesn't go for that at all and I would notice that that's when I would sense him lift. And I would give, I was like, I can't handle that. I can't walk like that. And I would get my heart right. And, and you know, and at the same time, uh, we can't be superficial with him. You know, like it's a full surrender. And a lot of us, we know how to be superficial with people and kind of kind of hide stuff. And there's no hiding with him. You know, so that's out the window. And and so he, we really, you know, we really have this this close open, authentic relationship that's also transformational because his glory, the glory all through the Bible transforms you. It changes you. It upgrades you. It shifts you. Um, and it's not an easy shift. Sometimes it's, a, it's scary. The Israelites, they would not go to the mountain. It was too scary. They wanted Moses to, you know, they were invited to dialogue with God, but they said, Moses, you, you here for us. We're going to stay over here. And they re forfeited the presence of God and the transformation of God in their lives. And they went right back into idolatry, though. And so we don't want to be those kind of people. And we can, even as Christians, we can actually live in, in, in blessing and promise, but not relationship. You, did you know that? I mean, you know, yes. it's, it's not about our salvation. It's just we can live with distance. Um, but I'm not willing to live with distance. And, and so what I found out, you know, walking that road, is I begin to notice not only his presence, the relationship piece, but then the signs and wonders started to escalate in my life. Like be, because his super gets on your natural, mm -hmm. and you don't have to you don't have to strive, you don't have to work it up, and a lot of times you're trying to work something up, and it's like you know, go back to relationship, mm -hmm. and if you want this continually, go back to relationship. It'll take a little more time, but it'll last and it'll be real. That's powerful. That's powerful. I know there's some people that are that are watching now or going to watch later, and they want that kind of relationship with God where He's their friend where he's their confidant, where he walks into the room, where they feel that level of closeness with him and that fellowship, that intense fellowship. And so I definitely want to make sure that we pray for that because I really believe um, that uh, that is the key to being able to step into signs, miracles, and wonders is when you are, are that intertwined with the heart of God, you also carry the heart and of, of God for the people, the mercy and compassion. And, and, you know, signs and wonders follow the mercy and compassion and the burden that we have uh, for a group of people. And, and that truly is living when you have um, those uh, emotions and that burden from God to uh, step into the places that he's calling us to go, to carry that glory, um, carry that relationship with the Lord. So that's profound. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Well, let's share with people again how they can get a hold of your book, and then um, we'll uh, answer a few more questions and pray again. Again, okay. you can go get uh, Jennifer's book, Glory Carriers.
how to host his presence every day at jenniferevaz.com. And I would also like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Candace Smitheman on YouTube. I have interviewed um, amazing people, uh, and you can watch all those interviews with fantastic uh, teaching uh, from all of them. And more to come continually at CandaceSmithman.com. You can also go there and also to YouTube to watch all of those videos. So let's talk a little bit more. You do mention in your book, and I am curious about this, about Dead Heart and um, kind of the revival or the miracle of Dead Heart. What is a Dead Heart and the miracle of raising a Dead Heart? Okay, so in short, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, again, I was on this journey with the Holy Spirit and and feeling his felt presence, walking in it, um, transforming, you know, personally, just, you know, like normal. And so, you know, what I found is that, you know, you never really arrive. You know, there's always something more, there's something new that he wants to do in you. And he sees things that we don't see, you know. And so I was in uh, I was in Perth, and I was ministering at a prayer conference, um, and you know it was a lot of warfare coming in, probably some of the most significant warfare I've ever dealt with. And then did this prayer conference. I felt like we hit the sweet spot. It was wonderful. And the very last night of the conference, um, I was very satisfied. So I went back to my my uh, apartment, and I I you know went to sleep. And the Lord visited me in the night. The Holy Spirit visited me in the night. Okay. And so what happened is he picked me up out of bed, kind of like, kind of like Ezekiel style, just not by my hair, you know, <laughs> just picked me up out of the bed. Uh, and he brought me right to his, his chest. I mean, and the, the emotion that I could feel was like, it was like this love that you cannot find on earth. It's just a very, uh, uh, extraordinary sense of his love that, that far surpasses anything we can understand. So he brought me right up to his chest, like in his holy embrace, embrace and then something from him dropped into my heart at that moment, and I was undone. Like, I've never been undone, ever, and I've had plenty of encounters and experiences with the Lord. This was, like, off the charts. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm just completely undone. Life was going to change, you know. It was one of those things. I'm never going to be the same after whatever just happened just, just now. So I was undone, and this is the realization that I came to, is that at once, whatever, whatever you did, something from him dropped into my heart, and I was undone. And, and here's the reason, is because I did not know until, until that very moment that half of my heart had died. I had no idea until it resurrected. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, my heart was dead. Oh my gosh, I'm all, you know, and my whole heart resurrected. And, and I was like, what has happened here? Like, I had no idea that half of me was gone. And we're talking about your will, your emotions, you know, the seat of, of all of that, who you are, your personality. Like, half of it was gone, and it came back. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And, and so you say, well, what, why did your heart die? Well, my heart died because of just life. I mean, you know, uh, betrayal and pain and hurt and grief and all that. And what I didn't realize that I had done, I did it. I had killed off my own heart so that I wouldn't feel pain. And, and that's not a good place to be because we see the Lord with our eyes of our heart. We sense the presence of the Lord with our heart. You know, we feel the compassion of the Lord with our heart. And, and I realized that I was not wholehearted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I was intentional about that, you know, but you can't be wholehearted with the Lord if your heart isn't whole. And so he did a miracle resurrection of my heart. I didn't know, like, if I kept going down that road, I would have had a hard heart, a, a heart that would just get stony and cold. I would have turned into a cold, cranky lady. I'm sure of it because that's the direction I was going because I wasn't dealing with the pain in my life. I was shutting it out rather than getting it whole. And he's the healer of the broken heart. I mean, we, I love counselors, and I, I'm all for all that. But at the end of the day, he's the one who heals your heart. And, and what I found is, is that many of you have big callings on your life, but you're not going to carry that calling unless you have the heart for it. Mm. Unless you have the heart for it. That's why he gave Solomon largeness of heart. That's what it says. And so if we're shutting our heart down because we can't feel pain and we can't deal with the, the things of life, we shut down our destiny. We, we reduce it. We shrink it because we don't have the heart for it. We're not wholehearted. Mm. And so I began to recognize that this is a, a, a huge issue in the body of Christ, that we're, we're just not whole. 
We're not wholehearted, not because we, we're, we're um, uh, you know, a lot of us, we don't even know it. We, we, it. It's like we can't obey the Lord if we don't have the heart to do so. And unless he works in our heart and we let him and we really get whole and healed, we're not going to obey him. Um, you know, it's not that you don't want to, you just can't. And so I began to talk to people about this whole thing and pray for their hearts to be resurrected. Now, now let me tell you the process, though. If I pray this prayer for you and you agree to it, let me tell you the process. You are going to experience something. I hear it all the time. People's hearts come back to life. They'll feel it in their chest. All of a sudden, their heart will start, you know, vibrating, and 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 all of a sudden, their emotions come back, and you know, emotions that have been dead for years, and they start feeling again. They start caring again. You know, that's that's how you know you don't care, you don't feel, you're dead. And if I pray this prayer for you, and I want to do that, and you come back. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to have to go get some counseling. You're going to have to get some inner healing ministry, mm -hmm. deliverance ministry. You will have to do those things after. Your heart died for a reason, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's reasons, and, and you, you shut it off because you couldn't fix it. You're going to have to get help. Um, so I want to warn you about that. Don't do not do this prayer and then not go get do the healing process because that will just turn even worse on you. Um, but, but I like praying this prayer for people. We need to, we need to have it, Candace. We need to have, we need to be wholehearted. We have to have it and we need dead hearts coming back to life. And if you're okay with it, can I pray? Most definitely. Yes, please. Oh, Let's pray for the dead hearts to come back to life. Okay. I want you to put your hand over your heart. If this, if you're in agreement with this, don't pray it if you're not in agreement because you're going to go through a process, mm -hmm. but put your hand on your heart right now. And Holy Spirit, I just invite you, even over these airwaves, I've seen you do miracles over the airwaves. I've seen you resurrect dead hearts, even over the airwaves. And I'm asking you to resurrect dead hearts, hearts that died, stony hearts, broken hearts, mm -hmm. um, hearts that are just half there, Lord. almost totally gone. Resurrect it, bring it back, bring it back to life, Lord. bring it into a healing process. In Jesus' name, make them wholehearted again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you so much, Father. We thank you for your presence in this show, Father. Just amazing things that you've done, Lord. Um, supernatural provision. Um, setting people up for destiny, Lord. Um, revealing to them uh, even fears or anxieties that they have about their age or about their health, Lord. Um, even the revival of dead hearts right now, Father. We thank you that you are calling your people to step through the divine doors of destiny this week and to make a commitment and a determination to step into the place that you've called them to be. I thank you that the angels in heaven are stomping and shaking so that we might get into proper position for what right. God has called us. And so listen, you have all of heaven behind you. Heaven is standing there saying, go, move, get into the place that I've called you. It, your dead heart has come alive. Um, your position now with financial blessing. You're um, in a place where uh, we spoke into your life about no matter your age, no matter your circumstances, you can step into this divine door of destiny. And so we just agree with you right now in faith and that your faith is increased and that even today you're going to get a phone call or God is going to prompt you with just incredible burden that, that will not leave you until you follow through and you obey him and you step into that place because it really is the desire of your heart and so he's just the Holy Spirit's just going to overshadow you in such a way where you're going to have to step into that place and you won't be satisfied unless you do so so we just thank you father so much for these um just this amazing uh moment that you gave us to receive these supernatural blessings from heaven father and to be positioned properly for divine destiny in Amen. Jesus name mm, hallelujah praise the Lord wow you're really really powerful Jennifer thank you so much Thanks. that was fun <laughs> this has been one of the funner shows I've been on in a while thanks <laughs> You bet. Wow. Well, we have a lot in common. And for those people that are watching today, that if as your heart got jump started 
We have a counseling and coaching center at Dream Mentors International, and so um, you're welcome uh, to call us there um, if you want to um, to get some mentoring or some counseling over the phone. And then I do private prophetic mentoring as well, and so if that's an interest for you, you can reach out to me at CandaceSmithman.com, and I can help um, position you for that as well to get uh, to get you in that right place of divine destiny since your heart has been jump started you know what I see in the spirit is that um, with, with those things that they put on the chest of people there's electric um, pads yeah. cha-ching cha-ching and so oh, people got, yeah. <laughs> they got shirked out hallelujah that's awesome it's awesome well again um, you can reach out to Jennifer at uh, jenniferevaz.com and um, just send her a blessing. Let her know how much you Thank appreciated you. this program for sure. And then yes. uh, join me um, again. Uh, my goodness, later I have people on all the time. Um, or go to my YouTube channel at Candace Smith and you can watch some of the past interviews with people like Randy Clark and Katie Souza and Benny Johnson. Um, so it's wonderful to have you all join me today. And as you know, remember, there is a glory road and you are on it straight to his throne. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.